Hello everybody, my name is Sniping is Fun, and I welcome you all back to the 41st character in this series of newcomer ideas for the upcoming Smash Bros. game on Nintendo Switch. And as I mentioned in the last video, the character we're going to talk about today is Chibi Robo. A character that has made his name on Nintendo a bit, and actually I kind of see recommended for Smash Bros. quite a bit by the Smash Brothers and Nintendo fan base, so might as well talk about his potential chance of getting into Smash Brothers 5. So, just like always, three separate categories. Why does the character make sense for Smash Brothers? What moves and ideas can I think of, you know, that they could possibly do? And percentage chance I could see them getting in the game. Now, why does, you know, why does Chibi Robo deserve to be one of the newcomers of the upcoming Smash Brothers game? Well, first and foremost, it is a Nintendo franchise that is still going on. Like, it's it debuted back I, on the GameCube, I think, in 2005. It was, like, one of the la like the later GameCube games, like the original Chibi Robo. I think 2004, 2005 range. And it's been continuing ever since. Nintendo has made games of it ever since. The, so, since the original one, they haven't been major mainline you know, Chibi Robo games or console ones, all the ones after the first one were handheld DS and 3DS based games. But, um, you know, the series still is going on and Nintendo at least seems to still care about it. If they're putting the time and effort to make more games for it since then, they're at five games right now. And that's another reason why I think it's likely, they, you know, the series is still going on and it's been able to survive long enough since it's a GameCube game to have five games so far. The original on the GameCube, I think two on the DS, and there's two on the 3DS. And this, if they're still continuing to push it, and it's still, you know, they're still continuing to use it, there is a chance we're going to probably see a Chibi Robo game on the Switch as well. And that will finally bring it back to essentially a mainline home console Chibi Robo game that it hasn't had since the original. And it's also a fairly well-known franchise. People are recommending him get in the game. Like, they've been recommending Chibi Robo since Brawl. And I really especially seen them recommend him in Smash Brothers 4. So, like, put two and two together, at least people are recommending him. And like I said, I don't take popularity and demand over relevancy, recency, and push from Nintendo. Or push, in terms of third parties, push from, you know, that company onto Nintendo and the relationship between the company and Nintendo kind of thing. But popularity and demand do mean something to an extent, just not as much as, you know, relevancy and recency and, you know, who Sakurai feels makes the most sense to put in in general. But that those are the reasons why I think, you know, Chibi Robo deserves to at least have a, you know, chance, fits in, makes sense to be in Smash Brothers. It's from a franchise that is still going on. Nintendo is pushing this franchise. There's five games right now. Chances are it's going to probably get a Switch game. And it's a fairly well-known franchise that has yet to be included in Smash Brothers. Same as numerous other Nintendo franchises like Elite Beat Agents, Advanced Wars, Golden Sun, Sin and Punishment, Glory of Heracles, like various Nintendo franchises that have yet to grace Smash Brothers roster, Chibi Robo's in that list, and it's probably one of the top level, mid-level ones that has yet to be included. And those are the reasons why I think Chibi Robo at least makes sense. Second category, move set ideas. I have, and this is a character I had to do a little bit of research on, just like Prince Sable and Rayman to some extent, and, you know, various characters. Some characters on this series of videos I had to do a little bit more research of because I either hardly played the series at all or haven't played it at all. And that secondary one that, it, uh, you know, reason is kind of why I had to do it here. I've never played a Chibi Robo game. I've never played the GameCube one or any of the ones on the DS or 3DS. The series looks fun. I just never got around to it and... Just never happened, I guess. So I had to do a little bit of research on how he would actually fight if he was in, you know, Smash Brothers. And basically the main mode, and I've noticed in every single game looking at trailers and gameplay of all the different games, the main thing he basically does is use his little power cord to basically accomplish his goals and attack enemies. So his smash attacks would basically just be swinging around and attacking opponents with his power cord, his little charge cord. He'll walk around, he'll carry it. He might make him a slightly slower character because he's carrying around this big giant power cord. He might be a slower character, so that might make him a little bit faster, but he's slowed down because of his power cord. So he's going to be a character that you have to kind of master his speed on because, you know, and how to attack because 
He's not going to be the fastest character in the game. He's going to he's gonna be slowed down, so you have to practice on timing your attacks pretty well, a risk versus reward type of thing. He can do some decent damage with his power cord, but he's not going to be the character that's going to zip zap around the stage and be able to do quick damages. You know, you have to time it, and you have to swing the cord, you have to throw your power cord, you have to lift it up and smack people with the cord, you know, whatever he does. That's basically it. So it slows him down a bit, makes him a little bit more strategic, risk versus reward. But I think it'd be an interesting concept, and that is basically his main mode of attack. So I'm focusing his smash attacks entirely on the use of his power cord, charging it up. You could probably do a charge attack, and you will just throw it across the stage or zip zap it around the stage, wrap it around people when he trips someone, you know, smack them upside the head, you know. Power cord, his little power cord charge cord would basically be his main mode of attack, his smash attacks. In terms of his special attacks, though, he does little things throughout the series. He does use a little vacuum, so you can probably suck opponents in and then blow them out. Think like Luigi's little, you know, Luigi's, you know, vacuum from Luigi's Mansion. You know, now that's in Luigi's moveset as a Smash Brothers 4, but make it less powerful because that's like his final smash. So you could suck opponents in and maybe blow them in a little bit and then push them away. At least it's good, you know, bring opponents in closer to you or send them far away to protect you kind of thing. Like, you know, suck and blow kind of like, you know, how you can switch on a vacuum. You can, blow, you can pull people in and push them away. He basically does throw trash away. He's like a little cleaner robot. So instead of like him picking up trash and getting rid of it, have him just take the trash out of his head and it's like his ranged attack. He could throw trash, a little pieces of paper or little objects from the game, like little tiny things and just that would be a range attack and you can just throw it and that would be a range attack thrown at opponents. He has a little helicopter head type of thing that comes out of his head. That could be a save maneuver when he's falling off the stage. A little helicopter and he goes on the stage. If you're underneath opponents, that might be able to damage them. That will probably be a good way to either damage your opponent or to save yourself from falling off the stage. And he also uses a toothbrush for scrubbing and cleaning. So. Special attacks, just have them beat people up with a freaking toothbrush. Scrub them with a toothbrush, smack them with a toothbrush, trip them with a toothbrush. That'd be hilarious just imagining Chibi Roll walking on stage and tripping Ganondorf with a toothbrush and smacking Link upside the head with a toothbrush. That, you have to admit, that would be freaking hilarious. So, toothbrush, propeller head, vacuum, throwing trash at opponents, that would be like his special attacks. And in terms of Final Smash, I found two ideas that actually kind of make sense. Which one they would go for, I don't know, but I do have one I think that would kind of be, you know, the two ideas that I think kind of would be at least interesting for him. And one, there is a Giga Robo, which is like this giant robot that he can control in like the first game. I don't know if he controlled it in any of the other ones, but I do did re notice that he can control a big giant robot in the first one. It's called the Giga Robo. So make it kind of like... A Giga Bowser type Final Smash. He controls this giant robot and it jumps on the stage and you just beat people up and just damage them. You give them heavy double, triple, quadruple damage. Or I found he also has a super chibi robo form where he turns gold and I think he does more damage. So it's like super sonic except on the ground and you can't fly around and you just do double damage, triple damage, quadruple damage. So either one is uh, some sort of like just giving you a damage multiplier, multiplier multiplier, and beating people up for more damage than, you know, TV Robo normally does. Which one I personally would pick, I think Giga Robo would be a little more interesting given that it's a throwback to the original game. And also it's a difference in him being super tiny and a super big form of him. Because Super Chibi Robo is kind of generic given that it, we already have like Super Sonic and other characters that turn into a super form. But I think it'd be kind of cool too, because that kind of represents the later games. He becomes like Super Gold Chibi Robo. I think I'd pick Giga Robo over Super Chibi Robo, but either of them would be pretty cool, anyways. So that's his move set. Smash attacks, using his little power cord to smack people. In terms of special attacks, it'll be the toothbrush, the propeller hat, um, the vacuum, and throwing trash at opponents. And either the final smash would be the Giga Robo or the Super Chibi Robo. Now, in terms of the third category, percentage chance I could see him getting in. I know I basically been hyping up at the beginning that he is a super push franchise that Nintendo still cares about, but at the same time, it doesn't seem they care enough about it when the only home console version was the original, and all the other ones since then have been either little spin offs or side game type things. And like not a mainline big major, it's always been like a platformer or something about cleaning up trash or going to the park or, you know, taking pictures or something. It's not a big, you know, mainline like 
main story mode based kind of thing like the like the original was it, so it doesn't seem they really care super much about it because they haven't given us a big entry in the series since the first one on the gamecube and quite frankly if he was all that important i think he probably would have been included in brawl or smash Bros. 4 so he's already missed out on two games and unless they really super push the franchise i don't see him having a high percentage chance for this game I'm giving them a 65% chance. That's still a little high, but it's not like the the 70, 80, 90, 100% that I've given to likes of Rex, the Fire Emblem 16 protagonists, the likes of, uh, you know, Shantae or Shovel Knight or Crash Bandicoot or Funky Kong or Dixie Kong or, you know, Captain Toad or any of these other characters that I've given higher percentages to. Elma, you know, people... These different characters, I've given higher percentages to that I give them like the 80 and 90% chance because they're just a lot more likely because they're a lot more heavily relevant and heavily pushed by Nintendo or a third party that's super relevant on Nintendo or heavily pushed by their third party company on Nintendo. Nintendo doesn't really seem to care about Chibi Robo. He's still there. He's still relevant enough to have five games since the GameCube and it's still a heavily utilized franchise that we will inevitably probably see a Switch game for. But they haven't really, really used him since the original game because all the games since then have just been little side projects, it felt like. So it's not like a, these big major games that they heavily advertise and heavily push. But he's still utilized, so give him a 65% chance. And there's still a future for the franchise because they're still using him. There's still a chance we can get like a next GameCube-style Chibi Robo game. We just haven't seen it yet. And I also dropped his chances because we haven't seen... he. He, he, he hasn't made it in either Smash Bros. 4 or Brawl. He's missed out on two games so far, so though I don't really think his chances are the best. He, he's there, it's possible, depending on the future of the series, but it's not the highest, and I'm giving him a 65% chance. And that's about it. Put in the comment sections below what you guys think about this video. What do you guys think about Chibi Roy? What do you think about my reasons why he should be in? What reasons do you think he should be in? Do you think he even should be in? What moveset ideas would you give him? What moveset, What about my moveset ideas? What do you think about it? Would it be Giga Robo or the Super Chibi Robo for a Final Smash? 65% chance. Do you think that's too high, too low? What would you give him? That's about it. Hope you guys like this video. Peace. Please subscribe if you want to. Have a lovely day. And stay tuned for character number 42. When I jump into the world of Splatoon, and I know we already know that Inklings are confirmed for the game, well, I'm going to talk about the possibility we can see the Octolings as well. See y'all later. Bye.